Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Fernando Alonso has given a highly optimistic appraisal of his expectations for the rest of the season, expecting to be on the podium at every single Grand Prix weekends from now to the end of the year. This comes alongside the major upgrades that Aston Martin are bringing to their car in Canada and at Silverstone just after that, and also co-aligns with Mercedes saying they don't expect to be quite so competitive in Canada as they were in Spain. Are Aston Martin going to be back right up there as the second fastest team? Very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. First of all, unless you guys have been living under a rock, you may well have seen that New York City looks like um, they're recording Breaking Bad in Mexico right now, if you guys know what I mean, because this Canadian wildfires, the wind direction has been spreading such that the air quality in New York is currently terrible. I believe it's been getting slightly better over the last couple of days, but I believe um, the Quebec area in Canada has been especially badly affected. Right now, the wind direction and other factors mean that Montreal isn't so badly affected by this and there is still another week until the race weekends but there have been concerns that actually Max Verstappen's biggest challenge this season for race wins is not any other driver but is rather natural disasters of sorts as we saw in Imola where the race got cancelled where he probably would have won and potentially Canada that's uh, the current discussion now look Formula 1 say don't worry guys it's going to be fine but you can never fully know right absolutely guaranteed whether it's going to be okay it probably will be fine. I would expect it to go ahead 90, 95% likelier than Formula 1 say. No danger of it being cancelled at all. Don't worry about it, guys. But they did say the same thing just a few days before the Imola Grand Prix was cancelled. They always say, oh, it's going to go ahead until it isn't going to go ahead. But I think this should be fine. But just given what happened in Imola, what happened for China, this, um, you know, the longest F1 season ever now seems to be a little bit under threat. So we'll see if it goes ahead. I imagine it will. And of course, Aston Martin will certainly want it to we'll see here over the coming minutes. Quickly on the compounds nominated, they've confirmed the compounds that are going to be used for Canada, Austria and the Silverstone Grand Prix that are next on the agenda after Spain. So the C0 compound was last year's C1 effectively, but this year they've moved that to the C0 and they've brought in a new C1 because last year's wasn't particularly good that's between the hardest and the second hardest of last year. So anyway, this is the C1 that is being used basically everywhere that uh, tire degradation is big, such as Spain, such as Silverstone. So if we saw two stops as we did in Spain, you'd think we'd probably see them in Silverstone as well. And there's no C0 being used. So I wonder if that's ever going to get used at all this year, maybe in like Zandvoort or something, I guess we'll see. But um, for Canada, it's uh, the softest compounds as usual for the lower tire degradation and the more really limited circuits that it is. So the hard tire will in Canada be the same as the soft we had in Spain. And that will probably be a rather preferred race tire in Canada. But who's going to win there, right? It's not really much of a question nowadays. You've got to expect it to be Max Verstappen. But who's going to be on the podium? Is it going to be Sergio Perez? Will he bounce back? Who's going to be the third car? Is it going to be Alonso again? Or will Mercedes continue the streak that they have had? Mercedes are very optimistic in the future of this package, but they're not so sure that Canada is going to suit it particularly well. Mick Schumacher has been doing some testing, of course. We actually did get some numbers, actually, from these tests. So Mick Schumacher's fastest lap was a 118.9. Few tenths of what Russell was doing, but fundamentally Fundamentally, it's not about the lap times, it's about putting in the laps. Who knows what the long run pace was for Mick Schumacher, whether he was, you know, particularly impressive to the Mercedes engineers or anyone watching. The fastest lap that was done in these tests for Pirelli over the couple of days was actually a science lap, a 116.6. We know the cars can go far quicker than that, as we saw in the race weekends. So I'm not going to jump to conclusions and say Ferrari are quite back as yet. The times don't mean much, but nonetheless, I thought you guys might find that relatively interesting. And Ferrari also said that if they really unlock their consistency issue, they can fight with Mercedes. It's incredible how Ferrari, how quickly they fall off, isn't it, right? To the start of the year, oh, we're going to fight with Red Bull. This is our year. Last year, we just decided to focus on this year. It's going to be a big year for us. They start off the year, Red Bull are way ahead, and now they're like, oh, well, hopefully we can fight with Mercedes if we solve our problems. It's like, oh my God, Ferrari on the regression train. Mercedes gave their reaction as well to the result in Spain. Very impressed, of course, with their performance, but said that in Canada, they they don't expect to be quite so competitive based on really the nature of the circuit, right? Spain is a track that suited their car last year particularly well. There are high speed corners, 
front limited circuit right where not too many traction zones that favors the Mercedes quite a lot they were fantastic round there relative to the Red Bull you know only three tenths off the Red Bull in race pace this year it was an absolute master stroke of an achievement based on what the Red Bull is able to do but Canada a very different ask lots of lower speed corners and they expect to be brought back into the fight with the Astins the Ferraris and even the Alpines potentially and this is in addition to major upgrades for Aston Martin although the car itself probably would have been okay there because we've been better at the fast circuits, the front limited tracks. Um, so we ended up with a really good balance, really good race pace. Now, where we're gonna go next week, Montreal, it's a very different circuit. Low speed corners, quite a lot of straight line, full throttle. And we would expect more of a challenge there. So we're not thinking that we'll be going in, nipping at the heels of Red Bull. We're going in there prepared for a battle with Ferrari, Aston Martin, maybe even Alpine. What do we expect from Montreal? Well. As I said, we're thinking it will be more along the lines of some of the earlier races where we're definitely in the bunch with Ferrari, with Aston. Now Alpine look to have joined that group, but it's great racing there. It'll be good fun. We're certainly going to be fighting to find every little bit of performance we can because the way the grid stacks up now, you can be P2, you can be P10, and there's only a few tenths in it. So we're looking forward to more exciting racing but certainly we're, we're aware that Canada is likely to be a bigger challenge uh, than the Sunday we just had in Barcelona. Thank goodness you've told me that. This is the last race without podium. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So of course Alonso there, like he's got a little bit of a twinkle in his eye, hasn't he? In the sense that he's joking around a little bit. I don't think he really fully believes he's going to be on the podium at every single Grand Prix from now to the end of the year. But after a difficult Spain, another difficult home Grand Prix for Fernando Alonso, he's expecting a major bounce back going forwards. And he's actually made this very clear with the statement that in Canada, we crush them. Now I imagine, we mentioned this briefly the other day, but wanted to dive in into more detail here, given these new comments emerging from Alonso after the race weekends on the number of podiums that he's expecting, but saying that he's highly confident in the upgrades they're going to bring. Now, I don't expect that he really thinks he's going to be beating Red Bull here or taking down Max Verstappen, but compared to the battle for second, which is probably the most interesting thing in the championship right now, he says they've got major upgrades to bring. So it was a kind of strangely anonymous weekend for the Aston Martins in Spain. They weren't great in qualifying or race pace. They were way off the Mercedes. But their car is very good over the curbs, typically, and it's also very good in traction zones and on more rear-limited circuits. Those are some of the benefits that we have for that car in Canada, and that's one of the reasons why he thinks they're going to take a big step forward. Not just car-specific things, though, but also the upgrades themselves. They are apparently major upgrades arriving, and this is the advantage that Aston Martin have, and we're we're finally going to see is it going to pay dividends because they finished what seventh or whatever it was in the constructors last year they have way more testing time more CFD time more wind tunnel testing time than any other team especially compared to Red Bull they have probably 60% more testing time relative to Red Bull which is a pretty major advantage and this is why as the season progresses we know that Mercedes have a good upgrade team they generally their upgrades usually work Mercedes as opposed to Ferraris which often do the opposite but now we're going to get to see in Canada. This is the first big upgrade package they're bringing. What is it intending to help? We don't really know, but this is where we're going to see, are they actually a threat for second in the championship? Because when you've got Alonso as like your main talisman to try and get the points and Mercedes have both Hamilton and Russell that are very good drivers as well. And Aston have Lance Stroll, getting second in the constructors is going to be a challenge unless their car is really, really good. And this will be a key test of whether it is a good circuit for them theoretically anyway, plus the upgrades they're bringing. Lance Stroll even called the Mercedes a rocket ship last weekend, so we'll see what these upgrades do. But Alonso is very optimistic in their potential indeed. And when we have seen Aston Martin being optimistic before, let's say going into this season, it tended to work out rather well for them. So this is the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, and it's very different in many ways to the circuit in Spain. We can see especially turn two and turn seven, really tricky traction zones, lower speed corners, much more rear limited that the Mercedes is worse at than the Aston Martin and then you've got turns like turn 10 for example another kind of exactly that type of corner with the hairpin but outside of that it's kind of just straight lines and this is where Aston Martin's straight line speed at the start of the season wasn't great but when they brought that new rear wing into Baku they since then have been really good in a straight line relative to where they were at the start of the year so it's not exactly a strength of Aston Martin but it's not as big of a weakness as it was previously again 
Ripple will be fine around here. They're good around everywhere. But this circuit is basically big long straights where straight line speed is important and then lower speed traction zone rear limited corners. So it's very different to what we saw in Spain and it could well favor the Aston Martin over the Ferrari and the Mercedes. Last year's Mercedes though did get third and fourth here. This was largely helped by Charles Leclerc starting from the back of the grid because of power unit penalties he took. Verstappen won. Sainz was second about a second behind. I think these numbers, these deltas flatter Mercedes quite a lot because there was a safety car not that long before the end of the race because Sonoda binned it into the wall out of the pit exit. You guys might remember. Hamilton has historically been very good around this track individually, but the car wasn't really great there last year, especially compared to the Red Bull and the Ferrari. So this year with Aston being good, they might be in with a shout of doing something. Stroll actually picked up a point there last year at his home Grand Prix in the Aston Martin. This year they'd expect much more than that. So you can definitely see a world in which Aston are again the second fastest team at Canada. I don't expect much from Ferrari to be honest. But is that going to be enough? Are these upgrades going to be enough to maintain an advantage over Mercedes if they even have one now for the rest of the season? Seems optimistic but Alonso is highly confident. Also wanted to mention speaking of Fernando that uh, Red Bull have actually mentioned very recently that they tried to sign Alonso three times about a decade or so ago. Even in the middle of the season in 2009, they didn't believe Vettel was quite of a quality to win a championship, that he of course won four in a row from 2010 to 2013 and wanted to replace him with Fernando Alonso. Kind of remarkable. They tried to get him at the end of 2008, I believe. Then they tried to get him halfway through 2009 and then again in 2011-2012. I believe this first one, Fernando turned down because he only wanted a one-year deal, whereas Red Bull said, no, two-year deal, that's the rules. So, um, you know, maybe another bag fumble there from Alonso, but it's crazy what type the timeline could have been if Alonso had have joined Red Bull. And that unwillingness of Alonso to go beyond a one-year deal, from his perspective, might have cost him a chance of being a multi-world champion at Red Bull. But it's pretty crazy to think about. And just this from Total Wolf as well, Red Bull winning every race in 2023 would not be good for F1, of course. It's definitely possible right now. I wouldn't say it's uh, exactly a guarantee that Red Bull are going to win everything, but you can't precisely rule it out as it stands. If there is a team that's going to beat Red Bull in a race this year, who's it going to be? Is it going to be Mercedes? Is it going to be Aston Martin or even potentially Ferrari but I don't really buy that idea. I feel like a good chance was in Monaco for sure. There was a chance if Alonso pitted for the Inters he probably wins that race. Julian Palmer did the analysis and he says yeah Alonso probably would have won because you'd have thought Alonso would have been able to keep him behind on the final few laps and he would have come out ahead had he pitted for Inters when he should have done. Maybe that was the chance. There are some other tracks coming up where potentially Mercedes or Aston Martin could be good and you'd think eventually some reliability problems or something will fall the way of those guys over Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez does now seem vulnerable to the Mercedes boys for example and potentially Fernando Alonso as well when they have a good weekend but Verstappen I think understandably might be eyeing up Vettel's record of nine victories at a race in a row which is uh, definitely not out of the realms of possibility right now so very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comments hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time